Hey guys, it's Abdullah and in this video I'm going to be comparing the performance of the Nokia X10 and by extension the X20 and the Poco X3 GT. So on paper this should be a very easy win for the Poco which has a more powerful processor and against the X10 it also has two additional gigs of RAM. However, is there more to this story than just peak performance? In order to find out, first of all I'm going to start with a benchmark and then I'm gonna do a CPU throttling test and then a temperature test. And then a speed test, which shows real world performance. And finally, a gaming test. So let's get straight into it. For the record, both of them are running on their latest firmware version. So the X10 is running on the latest version of Android 11, available for it with the August security batch. And the Poco X3 is running on MIUI version 12.5.2 with the June security patch. So we'll start with Geekbench 5, which should measure the peak performance of both of these CPUs. And this should be a very easy win for the Poco, but how much is the difference between their peak performances? Poco X3 GT scores very impressively in Geekbench, surpassing the Nokia in both the single core and the multi-core tests. Very impressive numbers from the Poco here. The Nokia does respectively well. The Snapdragon 480, as I've demonstrated before, on this device scores within the Snapdragon 700 range, let's say between the 720 and the 730. Not bad, but nothing to write home about. Now moving on to the second test, which is the CPU throttling test. So this test is good because it measures how well each phone can handle peak performance for prolonged periods of time which is quite important when you want to test out how well the performance consistency is and how much of that performance you're actually getting over prolonged uses and especially during heavy usage, for example, when gaming. And how well is every phone designed to handle the power of its processor? So let's go. Immediately we can notice that the Poco's performance levels are just generally speaking a lot higher than the Nokia. But also there are a lot more inconsistencies throughout the graph so far. After about a minute of this test, the Nokia still maintains about 95% of its performance. The Poco is already dropping below the 80% mark and with a lot more inconsistency. After the two minute mark, the Nokia is close to its peak performance, almost at 100%. The Poco is still just under the 80% performance. After the four minute mark, the Nokia is still holding up quite well at about 90 to 95% of its peak performance. The Poco drops significantly at this particular point and it goes around the 60% performance. After around the five minute mark, look at the maximum performance that each phone is able to actually get. So the Poco is ranging between approximately 200,000 down all the way to about 130,000, while the Nokia is consistently at 140,000. At around the seven, seven and a half minute mark, the Nokia is actually performing better than the Poco when it comes to numbers. After the 15 minute mark, it seems like the Poco has just completely given up trying to go anything over the 60% mark, while the Nokia is chugging along nicely over 90%. So I stopped the test at around the 20 minute mark and let's have a look at the results. The average performance of the Nokia was 146,000, almost 147,000, while its peak performance is at 153,000. In contrast, the maximum performance of the Poco is a lot higher at 267,000, but it only averaged about 175,000. And at some points it even dipped to the 140,000. The Nokia has managed an average of about 90% of its maximum performance. And in contrast, 
the Poco only managed 56% of its maximum performance during this test. And what this tells us is that the Nokia, despite having a weaker hardware, is perfectly engineered in a way to handle the maximum load that this weaker hardware can provide. In contrast, the Poco has much more powerful hardware. However, it's not designed or engineered to be able to withstand the maximum performance that this hardware can actually provide. Now let's quickly check out the temperature of every device. Sadly, Poco for some reason blocks certain apps from accessing its CPU and GPU performance. However, the Nokia doesn't, and the only indicator we have here is the battery. So the battery at the Nokia is at 34 degrees Celsius versus 39 degrees Celsius for the Poco. Now this is actually not really good for the Poco because the higher the temperature, the more battery degradation will happen over the lifetime of the product. And I've also noticed that the Poco has actually dropped slightly more battery life than the Nokia when doing the exact same test for 20 minutes. So despite the massive advantage that the Poco has, after about the seven minute mark, the performance average between them becomes almost identical. Now let's do an unscientific speed test to see how they both are when it comes to day-to-day -day performance while opening applications that we all use on a regular basis. I would say with the actual real world speed test, there is a very slight advantage in favor of the Poco, where I would say out of every five apps you open, three will be quicker on the Poco and two will be quicker on the Nokia. But the Poco also has an advantage when it comes to smoothness thanks to its 120 Hz refresh rate versus the Nokia 60. So the final test is the gaming test and I've already played Genshin Impact on both of these devices but let me show that for you. By default, the Nokia X10 usually plays the game at low graphical settings. So I've pushed it up to medium so that it matches the Poco. So these are the default graphical performance settings on the Poco. However, when I'm just playing, their performance is almost identical. I wouldn't call either of them very smooth, but both of them are acceptable. I'm actually quite impressed with how well the Nokia can actually keep up with the Poco in such a graphical intensive game. There are the occasional dipped frames, as you can see here and there, as well as popping. The performance level, I would say, is just about acceptable, maybe. And the X10 actually does really well when it comes to heat management. So even though I'm just playing now for maybe around the 10 minute mark, the device is mildly warm and it kind of stays that way. It almost never goes higher than mildly warm. Okay, let's try the Poco now in contrast. There are the occasional dropped frames here and there, just like the Nokia. But I would say there is a bit less of these on the Poco compared to the Nokia. However, as you continue playing after around the 10 minute mark, you actually start noticing a lot more inconsistencies in the performance of the Poco compared to the Nokia. I think at this point you can already notice a lot more jerkiness. There's definitely a slight advantage in gaming on the Poco compared to the Nokia, but it's still not perfect. I was honestly expecting a lot more, especially from this chipset. And I've noticed that the more I play, let's say after the 10 minute mark, the more inconsistent the performance becomes on the Poco. And the device is already becoming quite warm. Not like crazy warm where you wanna throw it out of your hands, but it's definitely warmer than the Nokia and the inconsistencies in the performance start showing up. Okay, here's my conclusion. If you go into the Poco expecting to get unbelievable performance because of how powerful the chipset is, you're gonna be definitely disappointed. This is a good phone and it does perform really well for its price range. However, it's very clear that this is still a budget device that's been packed with powerful hardware that it definitely can't handle. On the other hand, the Nokia doesn't come with very powerful hardware, but it does manage to make the most out of the hardware it has. So it sort of performs a bit better than what you'd expect, while the Poco performs notably worse than what you'd expect. 
But yeah, that's it from me. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow, especially liking these videos. And I shall see you in the next one.